Palm Beach, Florida, minutes before the world found out that President Trump had ordered a missile strike against Syria in retaliation for a chemical attack on civilians. The president took his usual stroll through the crowd of people eating dinner at Mar-a-Lago here. When he spotted Shannon Donnelly, a journalist who has chronicled Palm Beach society for decades, he approached her table, where she was seated with other guests. Big night, Shannon, a subdued-looking Mr. Trump said. Big night. The exchange, which Miss Donnelly recounted last week in the Palm Beach Daily News, was brief, but telling. Mr. Trump who has developed a nearly symbiotic relationship with individual members of the news media, tends to make a beeline for familiar journalists in New York and Washington when he has something he wants to share. Ms. Donnelly is that person in Palm Beach, where she has covered Mr. Trump since he was just another billionaire who decided to stake a claim to this Palm Line playground for the super wealthy when he bought Mar-a-Lago in 1985. Mr. Trump has made seven trips back since becoming president, and Miss Donnelly has been a fly on the gilded wall during several of his visits. While other journalists who cover the president remain cordoned off, Miss Donnelly has an unusual degree of access, filing detailed dispatches as a guest of club members or charities. Miss Donnelly, an editor and columnist, tends to observe her surroundings with more creative freedom than usually afforded to the White House press corps, this place has been home to more flashes than a double-blind menopause study, and now all of a sudden they're cracking down? She wrote on the evening of the Syria strike, after a member of Mr. Trump's security detail threatened to take her phone. Continue reading the main story. The Trump White House Stories about President Trump's administration a homebody president sits out his honeymoon period. April 16. Mike Conaway emerges from relative obscurity to lead House Russia inquiry. April 16. As tax day approaches, protesters demand to see Trump's returns. April 15. Jared Kushner and Ivka Trump, pillars of family-driven West Wing. April 15. Trump raises millions for 2020 re-election bid. April 14. See more. Related coverage. A homebody president sits out his honeymoon period April 16, 2017. Jared Kushner and Ivka Trump, pillars of family-driven West Wing April 15, 2017. A homebody finds the ultimate home office January 25, 2017. The next night, Ms. Donnelly filed another dispatch, documenting a more relaxed scene and posting a photo on Twitter of the guests, who included the New England Patriots Chief Executive Robert Kraft and Secretary of State Rex W. Tirson. The secretary, she wrote in her column, hands down has the best-looking Secret Service squad. While a new brigade of ultra-wealthy residents claim to neither need nor want news coverage, that's very old Palm Beach, Jeff Green, a billionaire real estate investor, said, socialites still read her columns religiously. Mary Bryant McCourt, a Mar-a-Lago member who has known Ms. Donnelly for more than a decade, said that the columnist tended to capture a clear-aid view of the festivities in a place where people applaud Mr. Trump whenever he walks into a room. She writes it how she sees it, Ms. McCourt said. She's fair. Miss Donnelly, who is in her early 60s and originally from Newport, R.I., has covered the residents here for nearly half of her life. In this town, a 12-mile long island full of mega mansions, the Palm Beach Daily News, fondly referred to as the shiny sheet for its thick newsprint stock, is stacked alongside national newspapers in hotel lobbies. Several residents said they viewed Miss Donnelly not as a muckraker, but as one of their own. As Hillary Geary Ross, the well-connected wife of Wilbur L. Ross, the multi-billionaire investor who is now Mr. Trump's commerce secretary, put it in a brief interview, she's very good company. Because people here know that Miss Donnelly's coverage can translate to more money raised and more gala tickets bought, she often has a front row seat when Mr. Trump drops in on fundraisers. Shortly after Mr. Trump was sworn in, Ms. Donnelly attended the 60th annual Red Cross Ball. Christina Webb, 
a colleague at the Palm Beach Post, said that the Red Cross had pushed back against the White House's initial rule that only pool reporters could get near the festivities. An exception was made for Miss Donnelly, who wrote a column and took video of attendees mingling with Marines by a swimming pool. Elizabeth Penniman, a Red Cross spokeswoman, said in an email that Miss Donnelly had attended as a guest. I don't know how she does it, Miss Webb said. She always seems to be in the right place at the right time. And in February, when Brian Mulroney, a former Canadian Prime Minister, began serenading Mr. Trump at a benefit for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Ms. Donnelly was there, too, documenting the night on Twitter. Protests may have been roiling the country for weeks, but this corner of Palm Beach was quiet, she noted. If you bet that POTUS wouldn't show at DFCI benefit after all the flap over his immigration order, well, you lose. Miss Donnelly wrote. Mila Mulroney, Mr. Mulroney's wife, said that people here were not afraid about what Miss Donnelly might write. At times, Miss Donnelly has gone from a fly on the wall to the center of the story. Other writers have repeatedly questioned the degree of coziness she seems to have with her subjects. Ms. Donnelly declined over email to be interviewed for this article, citing displeasure with a 2013 article in the New York Times that detailed the ethical concerns some had raised over her acceptance of perks, including a ride on a private plane, and her sharp-elbowed approach to her rivals, including Jose Lambite, a gossip columnist for the Miami Herald. Mr. Lambite has claimed to have been disinvited from events hosted by charities including the Red Cross, at Ms. Donnelly's request. At the time of that article, Mr. Trump was among her prominent defenders. She's never tried to get anything from me, Mr. Trump said. And people do it all the time. This time around there were no remarks from Mr. Trump, as the White House did not return a request for comment. And several Palm Beach socialites, whose names often appear as Ms. Donnelly's subjects, declined to be interviewed for this article. Elizabeth Clark, the editor of the Palm Beach Daily News, would not address any concerns over Ms. Donnelly's relationships in a phone interview, and instead opted to address Ms. Donnelly's coverage in a follow-up email. Shannon has built and maintained relationships over three decades of covering society in Palm Beach, Ms. Clark wrote. She wouldn't be in Mar-a-Lago if sources all over town didn't trust her. Even though Ms. Donnelly is allowed a close-up view of Mr. Trump as president, she knows from experience that he can turn on journalists he thinks cover him unfavorably. On election day, Ms. Donnelly wrote about a letter Mr. Trump had sent her in 1996 after he was displeased with her writing. Warning her about getting too personal with her coverage, Mr. Trump proposed a deal if she stuck within the boundaries of what he considered fair, I will promise not to show you as the crude fat and obnoxious slob which everyone knows you are. Miss Donnelly, thick-skinned after covering this town for decades, fired back with self-effacing wit, crude, fat and obnoxious I can't argue with, she wrote in her column. But slob, no. This back and forth is not lost on the island's residents. They had their issues, said Mr. Green, the real estate investor. But I think that even despite that, he probably just thinks she's a fun lady. It was Miss Donnelly who broke the news that Mr. Trump would be returning for the Easter weekend, generally known around here as the close to the gala packed high season. She found out because she had been attending lunch as a guest at Trump International Golf Club when Mr. Trump showed up the previous weekend. Miss Donnelly, who noticed the president was ditching the press corps, wrote about the high-powered rifles stashed in a golf bag towed by Secret Service agents protecting the president. She also relayed a few Trump-era etiquette rules, no pictures of the president eating, and no approaching his table. Like we were going to tear ourselves away from our lobster salad sandwich, she wrote. As if. Over the holiday weekend, the season was winding down. On Worth Avenue, the island's main shopping district, a jewelry store offered rings with sapphires as big as knuckles for 15% off, a $127,500 end-of-season steal. Mr. Trump kept a low profile, except to play golf, 
Attend services at Bethesda by the Sea Church, oversee an Easter egg hunt at Mar-a-Lago and fire off a Twitter message admonishing protesters who had gathered around the country to urge him to release his tax returns. As other local journalists posted by the minute updates on the president's whereabouts, Ms. Donnelly's Twitter feed and column stayed Trump-free. On Friday, a doorman at her building, which sits across the water in West Palm Beach, said she was not home. Her building faces Mar-a-Lago.